Hey everybody, this is Michael and I am a member of the True Spirit of Christmas team and uh, we are coming to you live from Nairobi. It is 5 a.m. here. Uh, we're excited to talk to you guys and um, without further ado, Chris Allen. Hello everybody, how's it going? Uh, this trip has been really, really awesome. It's been, uh, you know, we've seen some really cool stories. We've seen what me personally, I've seen what World Vision does and, and, and how they change people's lives. And uh, and just gotten to meet some, some great people, the people that work at World Vision um, that are doing all the groundwork in the different cities are just just incredible people. So um, it's been it's been really cool to hang out with them and, and see exactly all the different things that they do with with uh, you know, just with getting families clean water and and you know they give different th different things through the gift catalog and and uh, and more things that we can even imagine. So it's uh, really cool. So Chris, um, you guys left the day after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, w talk a little bit about what it was like to, you know, have a, an American Thanksgiving holiday, and then the next day you find yourself in Nairobi, Kenya. <laughs> Um, you know, we, uh, after, uh, you know, we're, we were, uh, hanging out for Thanksgiving and doing our thing and it was fun and, you know, it's almost like I didn't want to go because I had just, you know, just, just, uh, we were celebrating and it was, it was fun. It's all, it's Thanksgiving. You want to eat leftover pumpkin pie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we left the next day and I was kind of like, man, I wish I could stay. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh. So it was a little tough when we got here. The conditions were not amazing, and and um, the food is definitely not uh, my mom's Thanksgiving. But it's uh, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun too, though. So uh, we've, you guys have been here almost two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, what's been your favorite part of the trip so far? Um, I don't know, it's tough. Because when we first got here, we got we went to Sakali and got to meet John and see his story, which was just really, you know, you don't you don't meet a lot of people like that in the states, you know, that that will really go out of their way and really kind of do something so selfless for a community, not even just for a couple of people, but for a whole community. And uh, he's trying to take it on and and do some really cool things. But also when we went to um, uh, Bartabla and got to meet uh, a lady there named Sylvia and her family. She was so sweet. Her family was amazing. Uh, her kids were the most, they were beautiful and pleasant and polite and it was really cool. Um, Talk to us a little bit about uh, oh. creating the. Just went. Mm. Are we still on? Is it just screens here? Sorry, everybody. Hang on one second. Screensaver. <laughs> So, okay, while they're fixing that, I think we're still on. Uh, <clears throat> talk about what it was like to um, try to learn to, to make some of those little figures that they were doing at Zakali. Uh, it was incredibly hard. The first thing that they showed us used a lot of wire. So they they, uh, they used a lot of electrical wire. And they strip all the, the, uh, the coating off the top of it and... Uh, and use some of the copper wire on the outside. Oh yeah, here they are. I'm a little giraffe. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know if you can see how cool these are through this camera, but they're very cool. So they, they use a lot of copper wire and they mold it into these different things. And what I tried to do was try to make the end of a, a necklace or a, a bracelet or something 
and it was just a it was like a coiled piece of uh, of wire and I had to like form it into this kind of shape and it took every time I did it the kid left me it was it was not easy to do <laughs> and he did it in like five seconds it was crazy that's great um, who are some of the the people who you've met here in Kenya so far um, that have been really memorable to you um, our drivers have always been people that we uh, we remember. We spend so much time with them. Uh, we took three-hour drives in Bartabwa every day, so you know we got to hang out with them a lot, and they were they were so sweet. And getting to know their stories a little bit just was um, kind of crazy that they spend so much time away from their kids mm -hmm. and and their families, and just to just to do this, just to hang out with with. Uh, with with other people in 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 places that they really need help, and it was cool to see them drive around because they were almost like little local celebs. Like people would come up to me and, and like scream at the window, and and uh, one of the drivers' name was Kometo, and they would go on, Kometo, Kometo. <laughs> it was uh, it was they they were, they were, seemed like really special people. Kometo's awesome. Yeah. So uh, we had a question about what it's been like to communicate with um, Kenyans who maybe don't know. English. Did you uh -huh. learn any Swahili? I did. I learned uh, very few, but uh, but I know how to say. I don't even know how to say hello. I know how to say <laughs> welcome, karibu, but I don't know how to say goodbye. Um, uh, thank you, is Asante Sana. That's thank you very much, actually. Um, and good is Mazuri. I did not know that. Mazuri Sana. That's very good. Awesome. That's all I know. Good. Were there ways that you could communicate beyond just spoken language? Um, not really. <laughs> I mean, there was a, a lot of them spoke English, but and there were a lot of uh, translators. But uh, the uh, the cool thing was is music is is universal language. Everybody knows music, and some of them know songs that we know. And so it was always cool to like break out the guitar every once in a while. And, and I, I remember at one point. Uh, one of the one of the families in Bartaba, we were hanging out, and I was playing a song, and and uh, and I was playing Jesus Loves Me, and she started singing along, and I was like, I didn't know you knew this. It was a, it was a pretty cool moment. Mm. That's great. Uh, <clears throat> what originally influenced you to come on this trip to come to Kenya? Um, I I mean I I like doing stuff like this. Um, I like I like getting out of my comfort zone, and I, and uh, and showing people that. Because because everyone wants to help everyone everyone has this idea that the world should be a better place and how can I help no one. and uh, and what World Vision does is that it gives you a, a a place to do it it gives you a place to help out a place to change people's lives and uh, and just really respect World Vision and so I wanted to go just to just to let you know people that would hopefully see this that it's not that hard it's not that hard to to uh, to affect someone, um, you know, you can get them something from World Vision Catalog, you can sponsor a child, and it changes their lives forever. Had you heard about the World Vision Gift Catalog before? I had not, no. <clears throat> what are some, yeah. There you go. World Vision <laughs> Gift Catalog, where they give goats and stuff. That's a commercial. That's great. That's perfect. <laughs> Um, what have you learned? <coughs> excuse me. What have you learned about the the gift catalog, um, and just what it means to the the people on the other side of of the process? Well, I mean, you think about giving something like a chicken or a duck or 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 a goat, and and you don't really know exactly what it means for a family. You, and then I got to see it. I got to see exactly what what those things do and the pride that it gives them um, just because those things are, are wealth for them and it's, and it's food, it's, it's money, it's all those things for them um, and the way that they take care of them and, and uh, just kind of the, the, the happiness and joy that they have when, when, you, when they receive something like that. It's, it's, it's been really cool. That's great. All right, so what was um, 
what was your favorite food on this trip? Ooh. Wow. My favorite food. I don't love Kenyan food. I'll <laughs> tell you that. All right. But Fair some enough. of it is, is not bad. Um, they have... Uh, some of the fruit was really good. I don't think I was supposed to eat it, but it was good. <laughs> um, the they had the little fried doughs that they would make us that are pretty good. Um, but the day we left Turkana, we had this chicken thing, and it was so good. I don't think I was supposed to eat that either, but um, it tasted like chicken and and like some like salsa or something. Kind of nice. Uh, what was the most unique food that you've eaten on this trip? Um, liver, probably. Mm. Had liver. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, I bet you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a little gamey. A little gamey. Uh, is there any, uh, well, I know there is. It, what event or um, activity that you've done so far on this trip really has impacted you? Um, probably a couple things. Uh, both to do with water. In Turkana, we got to go see what some of World Vision has done in in getting clean water to some of the, the villages out there. And they they went, took us to a pump that used solar power and, uh, and had changed everything for that whole, you know, in the radius of that, you know, in, the, in that pump. I think it, it pumped, uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it pumped water to villages 15 kilometers away maybe even further than that I don't really remember but it was it was cool to see how that works because it's just out in the middle of nowhere and there's mm. this big solar panel and uh, and I asked them the great the coolest thing about it was that it doesn't take a lot of work for them to to upkeep it which was mm. which was great because it's I mean solar panels are expensive but they don't have to they don't have to do anything and also um, when we met Sylvia in Bartabwa we walked to her, to her new water pan, which was really close to her, which was great. But she had filled up her water buckets, and some of them are small, and some of them are big. And the biggest one, when we filled up, I think it weighed, I think it weighed 50 pounds. Uh, not even like, You're right. yeah, you could. It. it was really, really heavy. <clears throat> and she has this rope that she puts on her head, and she's carrying this thing on her head. And I'm like, I gotta try this. So I did it, and I'm pretty sure I threw my back out, and <laughs> I've had back problems for the rest of the trip. But uh, so that that was just that was so crazy to me that that she was able to do that, and before she was having to go an hour and a half each way, mm -hmm. um, and going twice a day. So it was that was pretty eye opening. Uh, why is water such a an important um, aspect of what World Vision does? Well, I mean, I think that. Uh, there, there's a couple signs out there which are really cool, and it, um, it said water is life. Water, water is everything for them. It is how they they feed their, uh, at least clean water is how they drink. You know, and the, the livestock that's how they drink as well. It's how they grow their crops. It's how they make food. And and uh, I mean, we use water so much, and you know, we take it for granted every day. But uh, it's that they don't always have it. They don't always have water there. So it was. Uh, the water is water is everything for them. Mm. Uh, if you could give uh, anything out of the gift catalog, whether it be things that we've seen on the trip so far or anything else that you've seen in the actual printed catalog, what would it be? Um, uh, child sponsorship, for sure. Uh, we we saw some cool stuff with that. Just because um, when when you get a, a, sp a sponsored child, when you sponsor a child, it changes not only that child's life and their family's life which it does that immensely, but it changes the community because it, it you know, at least for the, for the child that we spoke to, whenever he got sponsored, the school around him got a, a water tank, got like a clean, um, a clean water tank and, and a, uh, a hand washing station, which these things sound tiny, but to us, but it's a huge deal for them. And like new bathrooms that were, you know, a, a new cleaner way to go to the bathroom at the time, and, and so it, it it really changes everything around there when you sponsor a job. That's great. 